Hello, welcome back. We're at lesson three here in our permutations unit. Today we're going to talk about factorials and permutations. And up to now, you may never have seen a factorial before or even know what it is, but it is that very excited looking button on your calculator that has an exclamation mark, and we are going to tell you how to use that really shortly. Uh, in terms of factorials, many counting and probability calculations involve multiplying a series of consecutive natural numbers. What that means is, a series of numbers, natural numbers are all the positive integers, 1, mm -hmm. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, so no zeros, no negatives, no fractions, no decimals. So it's all positive whole numbers, and when you multiply a series of consecutive positive whole numbers, it would be like multiplying 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, mm -hmm. right? Or in the doggy Olympics, 8 times 7 times 6 times mm -hmm. 5 times 4 times 2 times 1. Mm -hmm. So factorials allow us to calculate those quickly, and we'll see why that would come in handy. So let's do an example where we can sort of refresh what we've been doing for the past couple lessons. Five friends are posing for a photo that you're taking. If they stand next to one another facing you, so they're standing in a line facing you, how many possible arrangements could you have? Well, you've got five friends, you've got five spots, you're going to place all five of them. In the first position, you have five choices. After you've used up that friend, you have four, three, two, one, and so on. So this is an example, and you get 120 different choices, of a series of consecutive natural numbers. Five times four times three times two times one being multiplied together. So we get a total of 120, which means that the total number of possible photo arrangements is 120 if you have five friends and they're all standing in a line. But what if you had 15 friends, or what if you had 25 friends, or think of a big number, you wouldn't want to have to sit there in your calculator and go 25 times 24 times mm -hmm. 23 times 22 times 21, all the way down to 1 for each position and each person that's going to be in your line. Instead, what you're going to use is you're going to use factorial notation to help you calculate this value more easily. So what I want you to do is have a look on your calculator yep. and look for a button that has an exclamation mark. Now, it either is going to have an exclamation mark or X exclamation mark, or it'll just be the exclamation mark. Either way, it's the factorial button on your calculator. And in general, for any natural number, and again, it has to be natural, so positive, non-zero, mm -hmm. non-negative, whole numbers, any number times the one below it, times the one below that, times the one below that, all the way down to one, that number could be rewritten as n factorial. So mm -hmm. your five times four times three times two times one, we could save space and we can save time by writing it as five factorial mm -hmm. and then typing it in your calculator, mm -hmm. five factorial. So if you find the factorial button on your calculator, then use it to calculate 5 factorial and you'll get 120. So if you're having problems finding that um, finding that button on your calculator, just take the calculator um, and the model number, mm -hmm. put it in Google, and, 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 and the enter the word um, factorial. Mm -hmm. And chances are you're going to pop up with some explanation of how you do it on your calculator. So if it's not immediately evident, most of the time, it'll be one of the shift buttons that you'll have to push because yeah. it'll be written above a normal button. Um, but even then, sometimes sometimes they're tricky to find. So whatever calculator you have, whether it's you know a Casio or a Texas Instruments or, or whatever it is, yeah. just enter the model number and then go factorial button, and you should you should find some find instructions yeah. on how to do it. Yeah. Okay, so let's let's use our calculators, get a little bit of. Um, practice here mm -hmm. five factorial if you put this into your calculator it will give you the answer of 120 yep. okay yep 12 factorial if you put this into your calculator is 12 times 11 times 10 times 9 times 8 all the way down to 1 this is 479 million 1600 if you attempt to do negative 2 factorial what you get is a calculator error and that's because negative 2 is not a natural number, and your calculator will not accept that, um, and so there's no solution. Now to watch this out here, because if you type in negative and then 2 factorial, okay, it will give you an answer. Mm -hmm. Because you're saying take 2 factorial and make it negative. Mm -hmm. If you go bracket negative 2 bracket factorial, yes. then you'll get a calculator error. Okay, so watch out for that. It matters. We're trying to figure out how to take negative 2 and multiply it by consecutive yeah. decreasing numbers to get down to 1, and you can't do that. It's impossible. Yeah. Okay? Because not a natural number. So, um, again, if we say 10 factorial and we divide it by 5 factorial, your calculator will give you an answer right away. Really what this is, though, if we want to write this out, 
is we've got 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 mm -hmm. divided by 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Yeah. Now look at what we can do with some of this multiplication. We can actually simplify by um, reducing top and bottom. Yep. And what we're left with then is just 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6, which will give you the same answer. 30,240. Now why is this important? It's important because here's, a, here's an example of 83 factorial divided by 79 factorial. Try entering 83 factorial into your calculator. What you'll get is you'll get, um, depending on the model that you have, you'll probably get an error. And why that is, is because this number is so huge, your calculator can't even handle it. Yeah. Excel often can't even handle huge factorial numbers like this. Yeah. So this kind of problem requires a little bit of rejigging. Yeah. What we need to say is that we need to say, okay, well, what is 83 factorial? Well, it's 83 times 82 times 81 times 80 times 79 times 76, excuse me, times 78, all the way down to times 1, right? So we can rewrite this as 83 times 82 times 81 times 80 times 79 factorial. And of course, we divide this by 79 factorial, which is 79 times 78 times all the way down to times 1. Yep. These two terms will simplify yep. and reduce. And they're a, it's a real value. 79 factorial, even though your calculator can't do it, is any other number. And if mm -hmm. you've got, you're multiplying by 79 factorial in your numerator, and you're dividing by 79 factorial in your denominator, then 79 factorial divided by 79 factorial is just 1. Yeah. No matter how big it is, when you divide yeah. any number by itself, you get one. What's cool here is that you're able to use logic yeah. and simplifying by reducing to perform a calculation that your calculator can't do. Exactly. So okay. what we're left with, 83 times 82 times 81 times 80, which are the factors that we can't simplify. And this gives us 44,102,880. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now... Um, each of these, in example three, each of these um, expressions can be simplified. Yeah. Five times four times three factorial can be rewritten as five times four times three times two times one, which is nothing other than five factorial. So note the difference. When you see the word evaluate, like in example two, evaluate each factorial expression, they want you to find a value, like take it down until it's a numerical value. Mm -hmm. No factorials, nothing else like that. When you see the word simplify each factorial expression, what we want you to do is we want you to simplify it down to a mm -hmm. single factorial. Mm -hmm. We don't want the value. We want it simplified back to like some simpler term, some single factorial. So instead of 5 times 4 times 3 factorial, which should sort of remind you of the 83, 82, 81, 80, 79 factorial, right? Mm -hmm. We can, in, in your mind, you're doing this step. Right? Mm -hmm. But you don't have to write this out. What we should be able to do, once we get good, is to jump straight from here to here. Mm -hmm. Because we know that 3 factorial takes us down to 1, and mm -hmm. 5 times 4 times 3 factorial takes us from 5 to 1. And if it takes us yeah. from 5 to 1, then it's just 5 factorial. Yeah. So okay. here in this one, we've got something a little bit different, 30 times 4 factorial. Well, if we find some of the factors of 30, of course, that's 6 and 5. And 6 times 5 times 4 factorial is nothing other than... 6 factorial. Yeah. And if you take 4 factorial and multiply it by 30, you will get the same answer as if you just did 6 factorial. It's the yeah. same thing. Yeah, but simplifying, we don't want the answer. No. We want a different looking factorial that's simpler, in, yeah. you know, reduced version of that same expression. All right, so now let's take our permutations and let's combine what we know mm -hmm. that we learned in lessons 1 and 2 about arranging things in a certain order and, and arranging things in stages. And we will combine that with our factorial notation, okay? And, and we'll make things a little bit simpler for ourselves. So we know that a permutation is a distinct arrangement of a certain number of items in a definite order, okay? There are n possible ways of selecting the first item, n minus 1 ways of selecting the second item, n minus 2 ways of selecting the third item, and so on and so on. So notice here that, that the implication is that there's a certain number of items, like you've got 10 books on a shelf, or you've got um, 8 pens that you're lining up on your desk, that there's a certain number of items, n of them, they can't be repeated, and we're, we're arranging them in a certain order. Okay? 
So let's say we want to arrange all n of our items. Well, here's how we would set that up. Say there's 10 songs on the MGMT album, Oracular Spectacular. If I play the album on shuffle using my iPod, how many different orders could the 10 songs be played without any repetition? So what we're asking ourselves here is, okay, I've got 10 stages. Um, each song is a different stage that my, mm -hmm. my um, iPod or my iPad, whatever you're using, is going to make a choice at. So I've essentially I've got 10 lines and I'm going to use up one song for the first position and a different song for the second and so on and so on. So we're just going to do 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 9, all the way down to 1. And that's just 10 factorial, okay? mm -hmm. which is just 3,628,800. Okay? So using the fundamental counting principle, okay. the total number of ways of arranging all n items is just n factorial, okay? So it's n all the way down to 1, if you want to arrange all n of them. Mm -hmm. There are two other ways to write this, and there are uh, corresponding buttons in your calculator mm -hmm. that you're going to use for different cases. If you want to arrange all n items, then n factorial is all you need to, to know, but we can also write it as npn, okay, which means n items being arranged into n spots, mm -hmm. which is the npn the permutations, um, or p, and then you open a bracket and do n comma n, which that means the permutation of n items into being n chosen spots. n at a time, right? Yeah. Yeah. So if we say permutations of n distinct items being chosen n at a time, so n items into n spots, and order matters, then those are the different ways you can see it. You might see it little n, capital P, little n. You might see it capital P, bracket n, n. You might see n factorial. Either way, it all means the same thing. So if we were to take our 10 factorial example, mm -hmm. you could write that as 10 items being arranged into 10 spots, 10 P, 10. You could write it as the permutations of 10 items taken 10 at a time. Mm -hmm. Okay. You could write it as 10 factorial. All three of those notations mean the same thing. And mm -hmm. notation is going to matter to you when you start doing proofs mm -hmm. and when you start manipulating expressions. Okay, So all three of these are equivalent, and they give you that same value of 3,628,800. Okay? So in your calculator, you'll have an NPR button. Mm -hmm. okay? And so we're going to show you how to use that. Right now, if it's NPN, if it's the same thing, then you can just use the factorial button. But as soon as we want to choose different items, then we'll start using different yeah. buttons. Yeah. Okay. So um, again, let's use um, let's use uh, an example now to kind of illustrate some of this. Yeah. How many ways can you arrange the letters of the word trickle? Okay. So the thing that we have to notice is that trickle has all unique letters in it. There's nothing that's repeated, which is good. Yeah. Um, and so it has seven distinct items. Now. We want to arrange them into seven spots. Yeah. We're not cutting down the number of spots. So seven distinct items to be arranged without repetition yeah. is basically the number of letters in the word trickle. This is seven factorial ways of arranging these letters. So we've got seven for the first. We've got seven for the six for the, for the second. We've got five for the third, four, three, two, one. And, of course, we're multiplying them all together, so we get 5,040. Yeah. Now, you could say, well, couldn't I have just used organized counting principles like we did in Lessons 1 and 2 yeah. to solve this? And, of course, the answer is you can. However. This is faster. This is faster. Yeah. Okay. This, this is, is more efficient. This is two buttons on your calculator instead of doing a whole method um, to solve. Yeah. Let's add a restriction. What if the two vowels the I and the E must be adjacent, which means side by each. Side by each, okay. Okay, so this is, this is again, uh, another one of those um, restrictions where we're going to give you kind of a sample of how to do it. And um, we're going to treat the I and the E as a package and arrange them as one item. Yeah. So they can be um, packaged together. So if you take the I and the E and you shove them together, well, now we don't have seven distinct items. We have six distinct items, one of those being a package of I and E. And the other five letters and the other being five the letters. other five non-vowels yeah. that were in there. Yeah. So really what that gives us is six factorial. So we've got the five letters plus the I and the E package, which we can arrange in any way, yeah. shape, or form. Yeah. However, 
that doesn't give us all of the permutations right. because really we've treated I and E as one unit. But I and E aren't one unit. They're two units. Yeah. So they can be arranged as IE or as EI. Yeah. Right? So we need to unpackage and arrange those almost within their package. We need to say, okay, well, how many ways can we arrange I and E together? Well, that's a two factorial way of doing it. Yeah. So we take our six factorial ways, multiply it by two, and we get 1,440 ways of arranging these letters if I and E have to be together. And you want to think about this as doing two stages, right? Mm -hmm. So stage one, we have to put them together, so put them together. Pretend they're one thing and just arrange them. Mm -hmm. That's stage one. Now you've got them where you want them. Now we're going to go to stage two, which is now unpackage them and rearrange them. So it's like, it's just like going back to the fundamental counting principle, only now we're using factorials with the fundamental counting principle yeah. because yeah. the number of ways of doing step one is six factorial ways. And then the number of ways, the number of choices at stage two is two factorial yes. ways, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So here's another restriction. What if the K has to be first and the T has to be last? Okay. So here we go. Um, we've got our six, excuse me, our seven spots. We're going to put K first. We've got only one option for that. We're going to put T last. We have one option for that. And so we have five remaining letters to organize through five remaining spaces. And of course, we can write that as five times four times three times two times one. More effectively though, once we put the K and the T in their spots, we're left with five factorial. Yeah. Right? So that's the way that we would want to write it and that we'd want to express it because it's easier than doing five times four times three times two times one. It's yeah. quicker. Quicker, yeah. Okay, here's another one. What if the I must not be in the middle? So what we don't want is we don't want I to be in the middle. Okay, so let's use an indirect method. Yeah. We've already calculated the total number of permutations. Yeah. All we need to do now, instead of calculating the number of cases where, okay, Let's put the I first. Okay, now let's put the I second. Now let's put the I third. Okay, skip the fourth skip spot. The fourth. Can't be there. Well, let's put the I fifth. Let's put the I sixth. And let's put the I seventh. Holy cow, that's a There's lot of different cases. Six cases for your desirable outcome. Yeah. So what we're going to do now is we're going to say, okay, well, let's take the total number of ang- arrangements and subtract the ones where I is in the middle. And that gives us the number of arrangements where I is not in the middle. So we can do that and we can put I in its place. There's only one option there. And we've got six factorial ways of arranging the other letters. Six letters, six spots, no repetition, right? And that's so there's 720 ways, six factorial ways where I is in the middle. So what we get is we get 5,040, which was our answer from A, minus 720. There are 4,320 ways of arranging these letters where I is not in the middle. All right. So those are examples where we had a certain number of items and we wanted to arrange them all. Okay. Mm -hmm. There will be cases where you have a certain number of choices and you're only choosing some of them. Okay. So Mm -hmm. this is, this is the second section of the, of this note where we are arranging R of the N items and R is a number less than N, right? Yeah. So some of them. So let's say, look at example six. Someone is trying to crack the combination for your locker. The combination consists of three distinct numbers, okay, so you don't have any repetition in yours, selected from 60 numbers on the face of the, of the lock. So how many permutations are possible? Now this is probably, this is, you know, really one of the coolest examples because, you know, I'm sure that at some point we've wondered, well, how many different possible combinations are, are there, there that a company could use if we've got 60 numbers on the face of a of a lock, yeah. how many different possible combinations are there? And so your combination represents one possibility out of out of so many. So if someone was actually going to try and go through and crack your and lock. crack your locker combination, how many numbers, how many permutations would they have to cycle through before they found yours? Yeah. Right? So let's find out. So let's do it. Okay, so we know there's three spots because there are only three distinct numbers in your combination, but we know we have 60 numbers to choose from and that there isn't going to be any repetition. The word distinct implied that they're Mm -hmm. different from each other, no repetition. So that means we have 60 possibilities for the first spot and then 59 possibilities for the second spot and then 58 possibilities for the third spot. So when we use our fundamental counting principle there, 60 times 59 times Mm -hmm. 58, 
we get 205,320 possible mm -hmm. combinations for your lock. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, what this also says, if you want to shift back into a conversation about, you know, in reality, most of these combination locks are 60 numbers yeah. and you choose three of them. Yeah. Right? Most of them. Most of the locks that are on your lockers are this. So, out of all of the locks that are manufactured in North America for every single high school student that has a locker, when you think about there's only 205,320 different combinations, how unique is your combination yeah. to you? Really, when you consider the population, it's not that unique. There are multiple of your combinations all yeah. over the place. Yeah. And so when you look at our school, though, you may think, okay, well, then at our school, the likelihood, the likelihood of seeing the exact same combination used twice is probably pretty small. Yeah. Because how many, how many students have lockers at our school? Well, maybe a thousand. Yeah. Right. So a thousand out of 205,000 isn't, isn't very likely. Yeah. But your locker combination is not that unique because of all the lock manufacturers that are making these combination locks. They've only got 205,000, yep. 320. they got to cycle back through it Exactly. Yep. So the thing is, is that every single year, they're pumping out new ones with uh, locker combinations. Same old combination same, you have. Same as yours. Oh, yeah. All right. So here's the thing. Essentially, in that example, we had 60 choices, but we only wanted three of them. Mm -hmm. Okay? So this is, you know, we've got N items to choose from, and we're only choosing a few or R of them at a time. So this can be written as NPR. So out of these 60, we're choosing three. So we'd write mm -hmm. 60 P3, for example, mm -hmm. or we could write it as P63. So the number of permutations of 60 items chosen three at a time. That's mm -hmm. what that says, mm -hmm. right? Um, we could also write it as 60 factorial over... 60 minus 3 factorial because essentially we want 60 times 59 times 58. Mm -hmm. When you take this 60 factorial over 60 minus 3 factorial, you it becomes it. 60 factorial over 57 factorial. Mm -hmm. And if you can remember back to that example when we had mm -hmm. that 82 factorial or 79 factorial, it's really just 60 times 59 times 58 times 57 factorial and over then that 57 simplifies factorial. with what's on the bottom and so what we're looking at here in the second to last line is what we wrote initially yeah 60 times 59 times 58 but there are so many other ways to write it and the first three ways okay are our equivalent expressions NPR PNR or n factorial over n minus r factorial and so and again these three separate notations you need to be familiar with because you're going to use them in proofs and identities mm -hmm. and you'll need to recognize true expressions from untrue expressions say in multiple choice questions on mm -hmm. your test okay. exactly so let's use this mm -hmm. all right so we're looking at the word potluck potluck there are seven letters to choose from they're all unique how many four letter arrangements can we make using the letters from this word very similar example mm -hmm. to where we were arranging the words, the letters of the word trickle. However, we now do not want seven letter combinations. No. We want four, four letter arrangements. So here we go. We have seven distinct letters to choose from and we have four spots to fill. And of course we could do this. Seven times six times, times five, five times, times four. four. But we have a better notation and a more efficient notation for doing this. This is 7P4. So in your calculator, find your NPR button, yep. type 7, hit the NPR button, hit 4, and then hit equals. Yep. Again, if you can't find this button on your calculator, enter the model number in Google and enter permutation. And chances are, if yeah. you have a scientific calculator, the permutation will be in there. Yeah. Sometimes they're just tough to find. Yeah. 7P4 is one button in your calculator, and it gives you, of course, what we'd expect, but the answer of 840. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Let's say we have to include the letter C. So C has to appear. Yep. It's still a four-letter arrangement. Still a four-letter arrangement. C's got to be in there, though. But C must be there. So what we have then is we're going to use a direct method. And we're going to say, okay, well, the C could be in the first spot. 
It could be in the second spot, it could be in the third spot, or it could be in the fourth spot. Yeah. So let's actually diagram it out. Here's C, 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 C in yeah. each of our spots. Four cases. Yeah, there's only one option because there's only one letter C. So C is going to be bang, 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 bang. And then if we've already used the C and we can't repeat, now how many letters do we have for the second spot? We've got only six to choose from, and then five, and then four. The same in this case, the same in this case, and the same in this case. Yeah. So really, when we multiply these out, we get 120 for each case. And we know, with mutually exclusive cases, because the C can't be in the first and second spot simultaneously, simultaneously yeah. we would add these together. Yeah. Okay. Now, what if I wasn't feeling very direct today? Yes. What if instead of doing four separate cases, C could be first, C could be second, C could be third, C could be fourth. Basically, I have to include the letter C. That's the direct method. Okay, I'll put it in there. Well, the indirect method says, well, what don't I want? Well, I don't want there not to be a C, right? So what if I just threw the C out? Not even an option not anymore. Not even an option anymore. That would be the only undesirable case. So if we take the total number of ways of arranging all the letters and subtract the number of ways of arranging letters, if we just throw the C out completely, mm -hmm. then that'll be the number of ways of arranging it with the C in, mm -hmm. right? So the C has to be in there somewhere. So without any restrictions, we've got seven letters to arrange in four spots, so 7P4. When we throw out the C, we've dropped down to six letters, and mm -hmm. we still want to arrange them in four spots. So now we have 6P4 or the permutations of six items taken four at a time. And when we calculate out, we get 840 minus 360, which gives us 480, which is the same outcome, which is the same outcome as, as using adding the 120 method. four times, right? So again, you have, to, you have to ask yourself, which of these is faster, is more efficient? Yep. All right, so the number of um, permutations with the letter C is 480. Here's part C. What if you do not want to include the vowels at all? So it's the same thing. Here we said, okay, well, we don't want to include C. Here we don't want to include the values. So what are we going to do? Yeah, we'll throw them out. Let's get rid of them. Remove the values. I only have five consonants left. And I want to put those five consonants into four spots. That's 5P4, yep. which is 120. All right, so let's wonder, in how many ways could 10 different questions be arranged on our next quiz? So I've got the 10 questions, I've got them sitting on my computer, and mm -hmm. I want to copy and paste them into a document, and I want all 10 of them there. If there are no restrictions, then I, I have 10 items to fill 10 spots, mm -hmm. right? So you can write that as 10 P10, 10, 10 items arranged 10 at a time. Mm -hmm. We know that's equivalent to 10 factorial, so that's actually a little faster in your calculator yep. if you got that factorial button handy. Um, so it's 3,628,800 different ways we could arrange those 10 questions on the test. There's no restrictions. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put all 10 of them there in whatever order I want. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, teachers don't always work that way. We don't want you to panic. Yeah. We know you panic sometimes. We often try to put an easier question first. And if I yeah. look through and say, I'm going to pick the easiest question I can find, and I'm going to put that one first, what would I do then, Mr. Jackson? Mm -hmm. Well... Here, we actually lock that into place, so it's no longer a choice. So there's only one option for that. And what remains are then nine items and nine spots to fill. Yeah. So what we have then is 9P9. Um, because, again, we're just going to multiply this by the one option we have putting the easiest question first. Yeah. That gives us really 9 factorial, which is 362,880. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So again, let's say we're going to work um, the same way. We're going to put the easiest first, and we're going to put the toughest question last. Yeah, that way right? if, if you don't get to it, you're not spending all your time on it if it's like the fifth or sixth question, and you're not wasting yeah. all your time on the yeah. test. Yep. So here, again, these aren't options anymore. We're just going to multiply by one. There's only one easiest question, one hardest question. So what do I have left? Well, there's eight items, and there's eight spots to choose from here. So... Really, now I have 8P8, yep. or 8 factorial, yep. which happens to be 40,320. Right. So when your N and your R, the number of items and the number of spots are the same, then it's just N factorial. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right, so now let's say, all right, the easiest question and the most difficult question, I want them side by side. So I don't want one first and one last. I want them together. They can be anywhere because I hasn't been I haven't been told where to put them. I've just been told mm -hmm. they have to be together. So again, it would be ten items, 
I'm going to take the easiest and the hardest and I'm going to put them together as a little package. So I've got the easiest, hardest package and mm -hmm. then the eight other ones. So with the eight others and the little package, there's nine items to arrange. So step yep. one is let's arrange the easiest and hardest as an item with the other eight, which is nine factorial. Yep. Now, let's say I got it in position and now I'm going to unpackage them. And I'm going to say, okay, it could be easiest, hardest, or it could be hardest, easiest. Because there's two items to arrange in two spots, because mm -hmm. I'm keeping them both there, then it's just, we're going to multiply by two factorial. Because it's the next stage, mm -hmm. and there's two items to be arranged in two spots. So we get 725,760 ways if we put the easiest and the hardest questions side by side. Mm -hmm. So um, now let's, okay, let's throw out that idea and say, okay, I don't want the easiest and the, and the hardest question side by side. I, you know, like I don't, I don't want to maybe put a student in a position where I give them a really easy question and they get it and then I hammer them down with a really hard question next. Yeah. Or maybe I really hammer them first with a really hard question. And, and then they overthink so, the easy Yeah, one. then they're so flustered that then they do the easy question, they overthink it and then they, and they don't get it right. Yeah. So let's say I don't want those two questions to be side by side. Yeah. Well, again, if I've got 10 questions, mm -hmm. there's a ton of different cases where the easiest and the hardest questions are side by not, side, are, are not, not side, side by side. side. They and could be one away. They could be, they could two, be two away. away. They could be three, three away. away. They could be four away. away. And so, then even if they're one away or two away, they could be in any of a series of positions yes. along that line. I know. Of so tent. tons of different cases. This is one of those times where you can't do the direct method. Yeah. If you if you took the couple hours that it would probably take you to arrange and to draw a diagram and to like, like it really probably yeah. would take you at least yeah. an hour to yeah. figure out what all, all this is, of to the do different all the math by hand. Yeah. And, and the thing is, it's not impossible, but you you can't afford to do that on a test. No. Or even, I mean, don't, you have better things to do. So don't spend two hours trying you to figure do. this question out. You do. You do. All right. So what's the what's the solution? If you can't do a direct method, you, you do the indirect do method. Indirect all right. Method, Love the indirect method. Yes. Right. Um, so we have the total number of arrangements. Yeah. Minus the cases when they're side by side. Yeah. Which we just calculated. We just figured it out. That was Equals easy. the number of ways when they're not side by side. So here we go. We start with our original, which was 3,628,800. We subtract off the ways that they can be arranged side by side, which is 725,760. And that leaves us with 2,903,040. Yep. Now bear in mind that we'll give you a question like E without having given you D already. Yeah. Okay, so in yeah. in this note, we're trying to guide you through and build you yeah. up so that you can see how these things naturally go. But we would just give you, yeah. here's this, here's 10 questions, you know, find the number of ways where you can take the easiest question, the most difficult question, they're not side by side. Yeah. So you, on a test situation, you won't have already done A, B, C, and D. You'll no. just be handed this question. Yeah. You'll do A, then you'll do D, and then you'll subtract. Like, you'll do that yourself. You'll need to yeah. come up with that as a strategy. Okay. And, and of course, um, your textbook questions are going to help you. Practice.